uh, got to be better offensively. Um, and that's the that's the biggest thing is offensively got to be able to score, got to be able to put points on the board. Um, you know, all uh, all other areas of our football team right now, I think, um, play good enough to win. Especially I tell you, especially our special teams. Um, you know, you go back and watch the tape on our special teams, just uh, how hard those guys are playing, the the effort level that we play at, um, and those type things. Um, but offensively, man, we've just got to be able to score. We've got to get a, a running attack established. And, um, we, you know, we've all talked about all of the things that go into that and, and where we're at from a, um, you know, from a health standpoint at the running back position and all that. But ultimately, I've said this over and over over again, that doesn't matter. We've, we've got to get better in that area. Um, and uh, and we got to do it fast because obviously, man, we've got a tremendous opportunity ahead of us this week going to Cape Girardeau to play SEMO. Um, I think they're, uh, what did you say, 13th? 13th in the country. So horseshoe game for us. Um, and ultimately just a, a tremendous opportunity for the 19 guys, the 19 seniors that are getting very, very close now, some of them, most of them, uh, to never being able to do this again, never, never having to worry about buying another pair of cleats and never being able to put that stinky chin strap on and all of that kind of stuff that you don't know you're going to miss until you're done. Um, so. Um, you know, ultimately, our, our focus this week is just having an awful lot of fun with those guys in preparation for a uh, tremendous opportunity ahead of us. I know you don't want to look too far ahead, but these last two opponents obviously are, are really good evaluation <coughs> tools for your young guys coming into next year. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you and your staff take a look at the development, where it's come, and where it can go in the offseason? Well, my staff doesn't yet. We, you know, we're, we're focused on the here and now um, and trying to uh, make sure that we do the things that we need to do uh, here and now to put those guys in successful situations here and now. Now, myself and, and JC, my strength coach, um, yeah, we, we've talked in the off season about uh, where we need to go. Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, it's not so much um, about the development of those guys as much as the development of the culture. Um, and some things like that, you know, just some things, because that's that's ultimately what you get a chance to do after the season. You get a chance to look back and reflect on maybe um, um, some things. You know, there, there's two different meetings, right? There's O and D meetings where you're looking at schematic stuff where you're going, man, this is not good, this is not good, this was really good, should have done this more. We've got to be more dynamic in this area. And then there's more uh, staff meetings where it's all about, okay, um, what are the little things that led to big things? What can we what can we retrace our steps on and say, man, um, you know, this is what we've got to get better at culturally here and there. And I'll give you a perfect example. You know, I talked to HUD before the game, uh, Coach Hudspeth, the head coach at Austin P, before the game, and I noticed when we went on our racer walk and we came to the stadium, they were already here. And we do that three hours before kickoff. They were already at the stadium, and I said, Man, Hud, I said, y'all sure did get here early. He goes, yeah, I know it. He said, man, I was, I was mad at my ops guy and all that. We didn't plan the trip out very well. And I said, well, only reason I asked, I said, what time did you eat? What time is your pregame meal? And it's kind of standard procedure. You always try to do your pregame meal four hours before your game time. You know, it's just kind of what everybody does. And uh, for us, you know, noon kick off. That was eight o'clock. We were doing that. And he said, well, he said, you know, uh, we had them boys up there about six forty-five. You know, we had to eat at seven because they left from Clarksville and all that kind of. And those are things where I think um, where we're at right now, especially like you said, with a young football team, I could only imagine the moans and groans that we would have if it's, hey boys, we got to eat at seven, you know, in our turn, 7.01 this morning and all of that. So it's some of those things culturally that, that, uh, that we've got to get away from, we've got to build to. Um, we've talked an awful lot about um, just um, protecting the team at all costs. Um, and getting out of your position groups, right, and branching out and protecting the team at all costs. Um, so there's been a couple of those conversations, none with the staff right now, just because, like I said, they're more focused on this week and SEMO and, and the incredible opportunity we have this week. Tell us about uh, TJ and Anthony's tremendous games this past week and just how they're finished. Yeah, they're just, especially TJ, you know, because AK, he's got another year back with us. I've said a lot about the growth of AK, you know, and just uh, especially from a maturity level. Um, you look at him last year to this year, and it shows up, that maturity shows up in the effort that he plays with every day. 
um, you know, and, and that motor that he has this year as opposed to last year. And that's probably the biggest thing I can say about him is his motor just runs so much more hot this year than it did last year. And I don't, you know, I, 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 again, I kind of credit that to JC, um, strength and conditioning. AK's always been one that's very in shape. You know, I joke he looks like one of the mannequins at Dick's Sporting Goods. You know, he always goes in there and he loves to curl and bench and all those. But I think he, um, uh, he did a nice job this year of just getting in shape, right? Running more, getting that play capacity up, what I call a play capacity, where he can take more snaps and play at that, um, at that higher RPM for longer. And I think that's showed up in his play. And then TJ Warren um, was a guy last year, we, we played at backer. Um, he was a little overweight last year, a lot overweight last year. Um, you know, used to always kid him, had a big old pot belly last year and um, wanted to move back to safety. We wanted to move him back to safety. He did a nice job transforming his body, slimming down. He's in the, the, the best shape of his life right now. Um, phenomenal leader. He's a guy, he's a positional leader for me. I meet with him every Sunday night. He's uh, in our uh, team leader meetings with, with the athletic director. He goes and does those things. Um, he's at team devotions. He's, he's an outspoken guy. He's, a, he's an effort guy. He's all of those things that you want your football program to be about. Um, and just been uh, tremendously happy and blessed um, to have him be a part of, of the program for the two years he's been here. Would you consider AK and TJ your two, maybe your most improved players now that the season's gone by the last year? Most improved, yeah, I mean, they'd be up there. There's, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, they'd probably be way up there, you know, just kind of putting me on the spotlight right there. Yeah, they, they would they would definitely be up there as two of the most improved players. And the best thing about that is, is it wasn't like they were bad players last year. You know what I mean? They've just taken huge strides this year um, to becoming, you know, what I think should be, could be um, all conference players. Yeah. Can you tell us about what they've been doing this year and, and how successful they've been? Well, I think the biggest thing, you know, offensively, they're just such a power football team. You know, they run that, run the buck sweep. They're able to get O-linemen out on your corners, which is never any good, you know, especially into the boundary. They do a lot of things where they're going to pin and pull uh, O-linemen out into the boundary, get them uh, um, um, against your corners. Um, so those corners, they got to be ready to defend that. They've got to be ready to take that on, beat that, defeat those blocks. <clears throat> um, and they're going to try to wear you down in the run game. Um, they're built more, I tell you, they're kind of an anomaly in this, in this conference. They're built more like a Missouri football, a Missouri Valley football team in my mind. Um, have a lot of um, fourth down players. And what I mean by that, they have a lot of bodies that you use for special teams, right? Um, the bigger linebacker bodies and, and uh, fullback type bodies, um, they're just built like that a lot more. Um, so offensively, they can come at you. They still have uh, the quarterback, old um, uh, Santa, however you pronounce his name. He's, you know, he's, uh, out of, he's not having the year that he had last year, but he's still very effective um, in that offense. Um, fortunately, they don't, you know, they did lose the big tackle they had last year. I think that that's kind of um, hurt them a little bit in their production as well, just because that guy, man, he could, he could take two on one every day of the week and win that, win that battle all the time. Defensively, um, just schematically, they just put so many dudes around the box. You know, they're going to have a minimum of six dudes around the box. Um, they, they play very aggressively in their coverage. Um, when you get closer, third and shorts, goal lines, they're going to restrict that box even more, um, which again opens up some things from a man route, you know, man package with your route concepts. It opens up some things there. You've got to win those routes, um, but you've also got to be able to protect it because they have so many dudes in the box. They can bring a lot of different guys in their pressures. They are very creative in some of their pressures in the way that they um, use their bear package and odd package and things like that. Um, so uh, you've got to keep your quarterback standing up and you've got to give him time to affect that man coverage. Um, and you've got, to, you've got to be creative in running the football. I mean, you really do because they're always going to have one more. They do a nice job of protecting their backers um, with their D linemen to where you can't climb and, and get second level climbs on run game um, and some things like that. So, um, you know, uh, they're, they're a very good football team, very good football team, good in the kicking game. Um, you know, they've got some guys, especially now they made a change um, at returner and put a new guy back there at returner. He had a big weekend uh, the other weekend. So um, 
you know, they're 13th for a reason, no doubt. A little bit on Christian Wilkerson, too, one of the best receivers ever played in the OEC, I think second in the nation. <laughs> yeah, that's number 15, right? You know what I mean? I, I know my number, Neil Sarr. Yeah, he's, he's really good. I mean, really, really good. And I tell you, that's the thing with what they try to do offensively, where they want to try to run the football effectively on you and lean on you with some of those big – that's what makes it so tough is because the minute you start dropping people down there to help, Right, to help your backers get a safety involved in your run fits and things like that. That's when they're going to come out of that thing and take him over the top, throw him, you know, here, there, everywhere, double move him, whatever the case may be. Um, and ultimately, that's what you can't have happen, especially against an offense like that. Um, there's a fine line. You don't really want to bleed that slow death where they're just, and you can't ever stop them, and that clock's running down, running down. But you also don't want to show your cards too fast to where you start dropping people down. They do this one, two, three times, and then they come out of it and they hit you with big plays. And before you know it, it's 24 to whatever uh, really fast because you've, you've devoted all those people to the box. So it's a good little scheme. Um, and every scheme, it doesn't matter what you do, works a lot better when you have players like him. <clears throat> uh, Coach, uh, you've been in the league a long time. You've seen a lot of different champions uh, throughout. And Saturday might be a crown for us to be, uh, possibly. What, um, what do you feel like are the common denominators for teams that come away with championships? Because uh, I know it's extremely difficult to come away with a championship in this league. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of things that go into it, you know. Um, um, one thing that's always going to be there is uh, effort. I mean, that, that is a staple. Every time that you watch a championship football team, um, the first thing that's ever going to pop out to you is um, the effort level at which they play. When you turn on the tape, um, do guys play hard, right? Um, and then the second thing is, and this is very easy to see sometimes on tape, um, do they have a championship football team? Do they have a team? Um, when you're playing them, um, we have a rule. And in, in each different position room, the consequences to this rule, rule are different. But this, right, palms to the sky. Um, how many times do you see receivers do this at the quarterback, right? How many times do you see the old lineman do this at the running back? How many times do you see, you know, one of your DBs, they get beat on a big play, and him and the safety are over there going, all of that stuff, right? The more you put that on film, the more chinks you have in your armor. And as soon as you see that on film, as an opponent, you start to say, hey, boys, okay, let's use this, use this. Get on them, stay on them, get on them fast. Let's start making them play one another, right? And I think, uh, and, and again, I've been very fortunate in my lifetime. Um, I've won a national championship and played for a national championship. Um, as a player, and that's the two things that um, that I remember as a player, um, and and kind of the um, uh, the experiences that I lean on even as a coach, um, and remembering those practices is um, everything was always done at a competitive level, right? It didn't matter whether it was a Monday practice, Tuesday practice, whether you were in racer gear, full gear, whether you were in hats. Um, it didn't matter whether you were playing dominoes with the boys, right? You were playing to win. Um, there was an effort level. It was a competitive effort level. And everything that you were doing, you were playing to win. Um, and that competitiveness showed up all the time. Hey, boys, we're going to do, uh, do Red Rover. I bet. And you're trying to get the best team you can for Red Rover because you wanted to compete, you wanted to win. There was never anything that those teams did that was just kind of like, um, for no reason or just kind of half-tailed, right? You didn't do that. Everything was for a purpose and everything was competitive in nature. Um, and then the second thing that I always remember on those championship teams is um, they were unbreakable. Unbreakable. Um, and what I mean by that was and, and I've got stories for days and things that we did when I was a, a player. And, man, we did the old Junction Boys deal one time where the coaches came in there and we were having a heck of a fall camp. Um, shoot, we weren't even doing it on a football field that year. We were up at the business school playing on what was essentially a parking lot covered in grass, right? 
and you'd come out of practice, you'd have dust boogers and all of that kind of stuff. There was no grass. You were up there. I mean, it was literally like the Junction boys, and we were all beat up at the end of fall camp, and we thought that we were pretty good, pretty tough, and we come in, and everybody's looking gloom and doom, and like we were in trouble. They bring us up to the gym, and all of a sudden, hey, fall camp hadn't been good enough. Um, we're going to have a Junction Boys practice. We're not bringing but one water cooler. This farmer outside of town, he wants us to take pictures on his farm. But in, um, you know, <clears throat> um, for us to take picture at his farm, we agreed that um, he's going to let us practice out there. So nobody can see what we're doing, Junction Boy style, right? And bad teams or non-championship football teams, they probably get in that situation. And you'd probably had about 20 dudes go, the heck with that. I'm not doing that. Uh-uh, coach. I'm not getting on that bus, right? Hindsight, you talk to those coaches that were doing it, that was their fear was, man, what if we have about 12 dudes just don't show up on the bus, right? We all showed up on the bus. Didn't matter how bumped, how bruised we were, we showed up on the bus. You weren't going to break us. We were going to go out there and we were going to do it together. Come find out we was going to a water park. And we spent the day at the water park out there, so it wound up being all fun and games. Um, but I thought that was a big moment for that football team because instead of us breaking apart, right, um, and kind of tearing apart and going, uh-uh, I'm out, I'm done, everybody got on that bus. Everybody was willing to make that sacrifice. Does that make sense? And I think championship teams, that's what they do. They sacrifice things for the team. And nothing comes above the team. Nothing goes ahead of the team. Nothing comes before the team. Not class, not girls, not parties, not all of that stuff. It's all about the team because you have to be unbreakable. And when you get out there and you get in those bad moments and things start going tough, instead of starting to point your fingers at one another and all of that, you wrap your arms around one another, right? You, you put your arms, you interlock your arms with one another. You hold one another's hands, right? You encourage one another and those type things. And that's... Culturally, what I was talking about earlier, those are the things that you're trying to build. And that's not easy, man, especially this day and age when there's so much information, there's so much bad things, there's so, you know, you watch professional sports, there's so many fights, there's so many thises and thats, and there's money, and there's all of these things, um, all of these factors now that take away from the purity, right, of the game. Um, in my mind, in my personal opinion, um, right, wrong, or indifferent, it just kind of takes away from the old – drink a Coke, eat a candy bar, let's go play ball mentality, right, of the game of football. Um, you've got all of that stuff. So it's very hard to, to build that um, foundation and that culture, and that's what we work at daily. It's what every coach in the country works at daily. It's a very long answer to your question. Sorry about that. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Hey, coach. I almost stole your phone. Hey, you just got a picture.